We are happy that you are watching this lesson. I am Janet Allison. My husband, Fielden, and I have lived in Africa since 1972. We have lived mostly in East Africa, where we worked among the Kipsigis and the Sabaot peoples of Western Kenya. We have five children and 22 grandchildren. God has really blessed us. My master's degree is in marriage and family counseling. Fielden's master's degree is in the Bible. Because we have lived so long in Africa, we have seen many of the problems that families and marriages have. From 1984, we have been teaching marriage seminars and counseling families in many African countries. We hope that our discussion today will bless your home. Well, today's question is very dear to my heart. Which is more important, to love a child or to discipline a child? The reason why this topic is special is because of the words that the wise man Solomon said that children are a gift of the Lord. That's in Psalms chapter 127 and verse 3. God gives us his precious gift of a child, and he expects us to do our very best in raising that child to be a praise and glory to himself. We cannot take that gift lightly. Because a child is God's gift to us, then we must be very serious in how we raise and train that child. That is why we want to answer the question, which is better, to love a child or to discipline a child? I remember when I was a child, my parents loved me, but they also disciplined me. I believe that the two things go together, love and discipline. After all, God loves us, but he also disciplines us. In the book of Hebrews, we can read that God sometimes gives us troubles to discipline us so that we will mature into the kind of people that he wants. And me also. I never doubted my father's love to me, but he sure did discipline me. At the time, I did not like the discipline, but now as I look back to my childhood, I see that the discipline was done because he loved me. I am afraid to think about what I would be like today if my father had not loved me enough to take the time to discipline me. You mentioned the Hebrew writer. He also said, You know that all children are disciplined by their fathers. So if you never receive the discipline that every child must have, you're not true children. We all have had fathers here on earth who corrected us with discipline, and we respected them. We do not enjoy discipline when we get it. It is painful. But later, after we have learned our lesson from it, we will enjoy the peace that comes from doing what is right. That's found in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 7 through 11. There are many more scriptures in the Bible which talk about discipline and love. Before we talk about those scriptures, Fildon, let me ask a question. Can you define love and discipline to make sure that all of us understand those words? Perhaps some of our listeners will have a different understanding about those words. Certainly that is true. Um, let us start by looking at the word love. We talk about how we love food or we love a good football match. But love is something you do or the way you act towards another person. Suppose you say to your son, I love you. The words themselves are empty if you do not act to show your child that you love him. Believe me, he will know that you love him by the way you treat him. Many times I've asked African men if they ever tell their wives that they love them. Often they tell me that they don't say the words, I love you, but they do things for their wives to show them that they love them. I think that both saying, I love you, and doing acts to prove your love are necessary and very important. A child endures discipline if he knows his parents love him. Mm -hmm. In some way, genuine love makes the discipline sweet. Can discipline be sweet? Mm -hmm. If I know that my father loves me and that when I do wrong, he will always discipline me, then I will expect that discipline and even feel unloved if my father does not discipline me. God loved the world so much that he gave his son to die for us. John chapter 3, verse 16. Love does something to or for someone. Perhaps we could define love as doing to someone just like you would like for them to do to you. Matthew 7, verse 12. 
Or another way to define love would be to put that person first, ahead of yourself and your own wants and needs. Love takes a lot of time. When you bring a child into the world, it takes much time to raise him, buying him clothes and food, talking to the child, showing him how much you love him and how to do things, taking care of the child in sickness and to discipline that child. But all those things are acts of love for the child. Yes, even discipline is a great act of love for the child. Janet, I've talked enough for the moment. Can you define discipline for us? Well, let me try. We often think of discipline as beating a child or some form of harsh treatment. But when we study the word discipline, we can see that the words disciple and discipline are from the same root word. If you remove the two letters I-N from discipline, you have the word disciple. Discipline becomes disciple. To disciple another person means that you train, teach, and correct that other person. Therefore, to discipline a child means that you train, teach, and correct that child. There are many ways to discipline a child. Sometimes discipline may mean that, that the child feels physical pain so that she will understand the seriousness of her mistake. Other times, discipline may mean that the child only feels mental pain. A parent must use some means to train the child so that the child learns to know the difference between good and bad behavior. And when the child makes a mistake, the discipline given to that child will bring correction and the required conduct. One big job parents must do is to know the path the child should take and then to make sure that child stays on the right path by using discipline and love. Being a good parent is very difficult. It takes much time and thought and energy, but the product of a well-trained child is worth all the effort. When I was an athlete in my younger days, we had a saying, no pain, no gain. We all know that is true. If you want to have good marks in school, you have to endure the pain of late-night study for many hours for days and years. That is true when we talk about disciplining children, too. A child must realize that when she or he breaks a rule at home or at school, that there are consequences. The pain of discipline brings gain or good change to the child. When there is no discipline to bring about right change in a child, then that child grows up to think that he can do anything he wants to do, that somehow he is above the rules. He thinks he's the boss. Parents are in the home to oversee their children and keep them supplied with all the things they need, but also to see that they follow the rules. Some parents go too far in discipline and injure their children. They inflict severe pain, and instead of the child gaining necessary learning, he is injured. There are some cases where parents abuse their children. Janet, I know that in many countries that they have made laws about child abuse. What is child abuse and how is it different from discipline? Discipline always hurts. If you are caught driving too fast, the discipline will be that you have to pay a fine. It hurts. The consequences to breaking rules hurts. But if a policeman stops you for speeding and drags you out of your car and beats you with a stick, then that is doing physical and probably mental harm to you. Discipline always hurts, but it should never, ever cause physical or mental harm to a child. There are documented cases where a father took a hot metal and burned a child or cut the child and sometimes even broke the child's bones. Mm -hmm. That is not discipline. That is child abuse. The laws about child abuse are there to protect the children whose parents do things to their children which harm them. Those kinds of cases should be reported to the Child Welfare Office so they can rescue the children from further harm. But do not let these laws about child abuse cause you to fail to discipline your children. Love them enough to consider how you can teach, train and correct them so that they grow into disciplined adults. 
Parents, please understand the difference between what we're saying about discipline and child abuse. Good discipline takes a lot of time because the parent wants to train the child and correct the child so that she or he will not do those mistakes again. That kind of discipline is done in love for the child. A parent must consider the fault of the child and then take time to think about a proper discipline. Child abuse is done in anger and without thinking about what is best for the child. No training or correcting is done. Mm -hmm. Rather, the abused child feels not loved and he learns to hate his parents. Just a little later in this lesson, we'll discuss some ways of disciplining your children. As a matter of fact, God expects and even tells parents to discipline their children. Remember that discipline is done to a child to train and correct that child. Parents are expected to have the learning and wisdom that they need because they too were children. They have been educated to know how a child should act. The English word parenting has the idea of guiding and training children and not just giving birth to children. It means to raise that child up to be a responsible and mature adult. Consider these verses from the Bible. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24 says, A father who spares the rod hates his son, but the father who loves his son disciplines him diligently. What I hear God saying in this verse is that there is no love without discipline. He even states that a father hates his son if he does not take the time to correct and train him by using a stick or a rod. The word rod in this verse simply means some form of discipline. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 18 tells us, Discipline your son while there is hope, and do not cause him to die. In other words, we could say that discipline should be given to a child while he is small, when he can learn and change his life. Sometimes parents are reluctant to discipline very young children, but that is the exact time discipline should begin. If you discipline a young child while there is still time for hope of change, then you will not have to discipline him so much when he is older. Your purpose for discipline is not to harm him or her, but to train and correct the child. That reminds me of how we sometimes describe a person. We say about a person that he or she is a disciplined person. What does it mean to be disciplined? A disciplined person makes right choices in life because she or he has been trained well from childhood. A disciplined person uses her time well. A disciplined person is a good person in the village or town. We all want our children to grow up to be loving, helpful, and good people. What our children become is determined mostly by how we as parents yeah. raise them. Children do not know how to make decisions about what is right or wrong. Disciplined children do not happen by accident. To illustrate what I have just said, I refer to the wise man Solomon's words in Proverbs 22 and verse 15. There he said, Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. The rod of discipline will remove it far from him. A parent who loves his child will discipline him because he is looking to the child's future, and the parent wants his child to grow up to do what is right. A parent does not enjoy inflicting the pain of discipline on his child, but he knows that it's necessary if the child is to mature properly. There are many children all around us. We see children every day. Perhaps if a child is a close relative, either your own child or another child in the family, you will feel responsible to discipline that child because you love that child. But if the child is a child you do not have a relationship with, then you will not take the time or even care to discipline that child. The deciding factor is love. I was a head teacher for some time, and because there are school rules, then I had to discipline children who broke the rules. So there are times when you may be forced to discipline a child that is not your own child. But even then, the best discipline is from a teacher or another person who has a relationship with the child. 
and takes the time to talk to him to help him see why the discipline was necessary. In the Old Testament book of 1 Samuel, we learn the story about a man named Eli. Eli was the high priest of Israel. It was his job to present offerings before Jehovah God for the sins of himself and the people. We're told in chapter 2 and verse 12 that Eli had two sons who were also priests, Hopni and Phinehas, but they were evil men. In chapter 2 and verse 22, we learn that the two sons were having sexual relations with women who served in the meeting tent. In chapter 2 and verse 29, God condemned Eli for honoring his sons above God. Therefore, God told Eli in chapter 3, verses 12 through 14, that because he knew about the sins of his sons, but he did not discipline them, that he, God, would strike Eli's house. Soon after God said those things, both of Eli's sons were killed in battle. We read that in chapter 4, verses 11 through 18. And the Ark of the Covenant was stolen. The scripture says that when Eli heard that the Ark was stolen, he fell down and died. Interestingly, it does not say he mourned for his sons. Did Eli love his sons? Well, the scripture doesn't say that he loved them but we know that he did not love them enough to discipline them. Because he failed to discipline them, both sons died. Love cares enough to discipline, to cause change, to cause correction. Failure to discipline is a failure to love. Mm -hmm. Fielden, I want to know what parents can do to discipline their children. Maybe we can give parents some ideas that will help them begin to discipline in a better way. We know that parents can cane their children to punish them for their mistakes, but there are many other methods of discipline. It seems to me that parents fall into a pattern or a rut when it comes to discipline. They simply think, beat the child. Well, you know, caning is a good way to discipline a child. I remember when I was young, my grandmother would stay with us for long periods of time. She'd get a very small branch from a tree, and when I made a mistake, she would switch me with the branch. I learned very quickly to respect that branch because it hurts. Mm -hmm. That little tree branch never harmed me. It didn't break my bones or cut my skin, but it hurt me very much. After using the branch a few times, when I started to do something bad, all she had to do was point at the tree branch, and I'd stop doing the bad Mm -hmm. thing. Another way of discipline is to withhold something the child likes. For example, the child would not be allowed to play with his friends for a day, or a daughter would not be permitted to watch television for a day or longer. Perhaps an older child would not be permitted to play in a football match. That kind of discipline does not hurt the body, but it hurts just the same. Mm When we talk about the relationship of love and discipline, let's look at this chart. In the upper left side of the diagram, in a home where the parents do not love their children and they do not discipline their children, the children grow up rebellious, angry, and violent. Mm -hmm. Look at the lower left-hand position. In a home where the parents love their children and give them many gifts, but they never correct the children with good discipline, the children grow up rebelling against any authority. On the upper right-hand side of the diagram, you will see that in a home where the parents are very forceful and discipline their children, but they do not love them, the children rebel against the parents. Now look at the bottom right side, and you will see that where the parents love their children and take the time to discipline them, there is an atmosphere of respect and the children mature properly. Well, we hope that you have learned that in a good home, both love and discipline are needed to make strong, well-behaved children. If you have more questions about this very important topic, please write to us at aimfradio at gmail.com. We value your questions and comments. Thank you for watching this program. Have a good day.